Hello and welcome to Management Information Systems. This is going to be a supplement to lecture six, and we are going to look at the foundation of business intelligence, which is database. So we will be creating um, a database for student management or uh, student performance management. So um, let's look at um, the plan. Yeah, so in trying to create any database, um, you have to add, do some planning, identify your entities, which determines the tables of your database. Um, remember, this is a relational database. And in relational database, tables are the repository where we want to store data. So we will have to what, identify the tables that will be what, used to store data. And um, we have identified um, student profile table. This is going to be the table that will hold student personal details. Then we have what the course table, the exam table, and the performance table. So this is the plan. And we are going to implement this plan on Microsoft Access. So let's jump straight to Microsoft Access. Okay, so this is the initial interface you encounter, and you should look for the blank database because we want to create a database from scratch. So I will simply name the database, so you can provide a name here. Um, so I'll make it um, ST, uh, yeah, DB. So that is what we have student database. Okay. So this is how I'm going to name my database, so create. Okay, so once you open, um, they'll give you a default table. Yeah, so um, you can always close this table and then yeah, begin to create your own tables if you want. Or if you just wanted, you could be working with a default table. Uh, but there is one thing you should know here. Um, let's familiarize ourselves with the interface first. So um, at the very top, we have what the menu bar that contains um, the menu items. So we have the home tab, um, create tab. Yeah, and then we have what external um, data tab, database tools. So these are the tabs. And then each tab um, has what we call a ribbon. And the ribbon contains tools that we'll be using for different things. And then um, database also has what we call what objects, okay? Yeah, so um, usually in access, the objects are tables, queries, forms, reports, and macros. So these are the various objects we have there. And yeah, uh, there is a pin here that um, serves as a navigator for all the objects we'll be creating. So if you want to move from one object to the other, you want to move from a table to a form or to a table, you can always do the navigation in this pin. So um, that is the navigation pin. Okay, so um, that is it for a quick tour. Um, let's begin implementing our database tables. Okay, so um, you have two options here. The first one is to go for what's on the table icon here, or you can also use the table design, which takes you directly to the design view. Okay, so let me start with the table. So I've opened the table, and once you do that, um, you need to go to the design view of the table, and then you can go to the file um, tab here, and right below it, you see a, a drop-down view um, button so just click on the drop down and then you find the various views so this is to tell you that um, the the tables in access database has two views or more okay yeah then um, you, you can always what, switch from one view to the other so depending on what you want to do um, you go to the appropriate appropriate view for that so you can see that the data sheet view, if we wanted to enter data, then you can what, use the data sheet view. But if we want to do design, it means you have to go to the design view. So I'll go to what, design view. So once you do that, they will ask you to name your table. And the first table we want to create, remember, is what? The student profile table. So we'll be keeping student personal information here. So student profile. 
all right so let's hit okay and then we can have what our student profile table registered here and the face you are or the interface you are seeing now is the design um, view of what the table okay so in the design view you have what the fold names so the fold names are going to be the attributes of what your student profile what um, entity that that is going to be the attribute of the students okay so by default they what start with an id and then they'll make it the primary key and then the data type will be what auto number so you can change this okay if you look at what we have we have what um first name and that will be what uh a story a student name yeah that will be the primary key so let's sorry student id that will be the primary key so let's bring the student id yeah so student um, id you can always put an underscore or yeah that is to separate them or you can combine them together yeah so then let's move to the data type yeah so normally um, the data type um, depending on what kind of data you are going to store you have to look um, in this list and then pick the appropriate data type okay so auto number means the system is going to generate the id the student id for you but um, in your situation you have what student id so you don't need system generated id so we are going to change it to what an appropriate data type so you can go for text text takes both what numbers and um, string or text yeah so the text will take both what um text and then what um, numbers and then when you see text it means um the size yeah if you go for text it means the size um shouldn't exceed 255 that is text yeah but if you have something that is what um beyond 255 it means you can go for memo and depending on the version you are using you will not see text or memo you'll be seeing short text or long text so if you are using um, a later version you will see that um, you have what short text so you go for short text to mean text and then long text to mean memo yeah so memo is usually having a capacity of around 60 um, thousand yeah, characters so if you are to do something that is what um yeah, yeah below that range and then uh, or is closer to what i mean um, 60 thousand then you can go for memo yeah all right so um we are going to go for text and then um that will be our data type and we'll bring the description here so we just say um identity yeah okay or identity number say that um or you can still what um add more information student um identity number say that if somebody takes this in future and then you are not around um, they will be able to know what student ID means. Yeah, at times you could even use more shorthands Yeah, than um, what I'm using here. All right, so let's go to the next one. That is what the first name so you may not um, Put everything there. So the first name so I could make it this way and Yeah, we'll go for text text will be appropriate Yeah, but um, even with the text we we'll need to what? still um, change the size to what um, save more space because the first name uh, doesn't need 255 what spaces so if you leave the 255 it means you are allocating 255 um, storage yeah space for the first name alone and that is way too much your first name shouldn't be more than 30 watts characters so we can just use 30 and then we have to do the same for what the student id as well so the student id your student id is around eight character eight characters so i can just use 10 characters for the student id and then the first name um if it is self-explanatory you can just leave it and then we can go for the last name okay 
then that will be text and then we'll change the size to um 30 as well yeah but also um we have to also indicate the caption if you don't put it you can put it later on yeah, it doesn't really matter so much for now uh, but if you are going to add create forms later um you need caption caption will be very important later so you must as well guess what provide it here whilst you are designing so the caption will be what um first name so this time you can give a space you yeah you saw that um in the full name part um, we couldn't give spaces yeah for the first name yeah you couldn't give spaces for the first name student id and so on so we have to do that for the rest of them yeah we should provide the caption so this is what um first name okay and then we should provide a caption for the student id as well so student id okay so i think the last name the caption i made a mistake it should be last not first so okay so this is the caption yeah all right let's go to the next um yeah full that is the date of birth so let's so we'll go for um dob so i'll use short hands for that and the data type should be date okay so we have date or time here we'll select that and then we'll provide description here so um date of birth okay then um the the format yeah so we can go for the date format here you want your date of birth um to be i think we can use medium date so if you want it in this format you can use medium dates then the caption will be what um date of birth okay and for the date um we have to what provide um what we call the validation rule and the validation text okay so the validation rule um we can create a rule that doesn't allow people uh to be born in the future because anybody alive today has his date um, either today or in the past but it cannot be in the future so to avoid inaccurate data you can always what provide a validation rule this validation rule can also be um, important for a lot of other things so you could um, look at a situation um, where let's say that this field was what um, perhaps salary yeah and then in the organization nobody should be paid um, below let's say um, a particular amount yeah as the salary so you can set that say that whoever is doing the data entry they cannot what pay people less than they should be paid and at times even let's say it is what um yeah some bonus or it is some yeah uh, let, let's say um yeah it, it, it could be something that the workers are entitled to some allowance let me put it that way it could be some allowance and then nobody is to pay below yeah let's say 300 cities so you could set it the rule to be that um, the field should not accept yeah any entry less than 300 ghana cities yeah but in our case we are using it for the date so we are going to see the date should not be what um uh, so let me just say greater than yeah today's date okay so later today's date you just put now and then uh, yeah and then um you can close the bracket and then yeah this is it so let's hit the tab key and then once it accepted so but you can always go to the expression builder to look at it as well so you could come to the expression builder to create this so you could see what um, 
Yeah, sometimes you have to start it with an equal sign, but I'm just trying to do it without the equal sign to see if it works. So I'll just say um, greater than now, and then um, you close the brackets and you hit OK. Yeah, but mostly formulas um, starts with what? Um, an equal sign. Yeah, so if you use it this way, perhaps it might work because of the version of what? Um, office I'm using that is 2010 access 2010 that is what I'm using yeah so it might work but maybe in later version you may have to put equal sign so you can always try both yeah if one doesn't work you try the other so now um, we need to provide some validation text yeah what if somebody breaks this rule um, how should they be prompted so we can say that um, please provide an accurate yeah, date of birth. Okay, so that would be the validation rule. Okay, so now let's move to um, the gender. So with the gender, um, the data type, um, we can customize that. So we'll go for a lookup wizard. All right. So the lookup wizard will bring a dialog. Um, if you have the information sitting somewhere in a table, then you use this first option to look up in that table. But if you want to type it in, then you can go for the second option here. So I'll select the second option, hit next, and then I'll provide my gender options here. So the first one will be male. So it's sort of female. So female first then um, male yeah so there shouldn't be s here so female male and then you can be more diplomatic and say prefer not to say because others can be sensitive about the agenda prefer not to say all right then let's hit next and you can limit it by checking this box or you may just leave it open and then you hit um, finish. All right, so we have our agenda now. Let me see what field we should consider next. So program level, phone number, and address. So let's get them all. So we have what um, program? Then program. You can use text. Yeah, and then you can also customize it if you have what um, the programs yeah really available to you. You can customize it, but let's leave it at text so that it will be open. And then I will change the size so the program shouldn't be more than 50 characters. That is my assumption. And the caption, so we'll just say program. Yeah, so for the caption, even if you forget, you can always come back later to fix that. So we have what um, the program. Yeah, so I think the gender, I didn't provide the caption and the size. So what um, C, gender. And then um, the size, the gender shouldn't be um, more than eight okay so this is it then we'll move towards um, the level okay so with the level um, we can what customize that so we'll go for the lookup wizard and then we'll select so that we can enter the options that we like so the level will be what um, so let's say we're considering level 100 let me go back level 100 um, 200 300 4 yeah, 6 um, I don't know whether there's 700 but let's provide that okay so these are the levels um, we may be having and let's hit next and then we'll leave it open and we'll hit finish then the size of it um, is obviously um, three characters, so we just say five. 
and then the caption will provide what um, level okay so we can go to the next one so hit up okay and the next one should be phone number so phone bring the number there if you want to all right okay and at times when it looks odd you can just put your underscore there uh, you probably might just say something like this phone number and then um, the phone number um, is usually advisable you go for text so anytime you have to store any number that doesn't require um, arithmetic you are not going to do any computations with that number then you can always use text because if you use number for the phone number data type you realize that um, number will exclude the zero and Ghanaian phone numbers um, we usually have some zero in there yeah so if it is starting with the zero then um, if you use number for it it's going to exclude the zero at the beginning okay yeah, so text will do well for both what um, text and numbers. So, um, or for both letters and numbers. So let's go for what um, text. And then the phone numbers, um, it shouldn't be more than 25. Even if you are using what, um, adding the country code. So we'll go for what, um, 25. And then um, the caption will say what um, phone number. All right, so that is a caption, and then here we can put what um, an input max, yeah, say that it can guide entry of phone numbers. Okay, so to provide the input max, um, just enter the input max field, and then there will be some what um, three bullets at the far end. So you click, and then um, it will ask you to save your work. You hit yes and then it gives you the input max wizards yeah so this is it for phone number and um, if it is not appropriate then you can edit it so i can go to edit list and um, you can just clear the whole of this and then you what provide what you want so want um, the first ones to be in bracket that is the country code and usually they are four so it's zero zero two three three so that is um is a five yeah so we'll provide that by saying nine 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 yeah so the nine should be five then we'll close the brackets then we'll now come for the first part of your phone number um which is usually three digits so we could say that um yeah so that one we could say is zero 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 so that is the first three digits we'll bring a hyphen and then we'll bring the remainder of the digits that is um six so all right so that is it and you can what um, close it and also the placeholder um what you want to be seen in the places that the phone number should be entered you can go for what um a hyphen uh, underscore or you can go for a hyphen or you can go for um the asterisk key yeah or even the hash key you can use that yeah, yeah you can use the hash key as well or um any any other symbol of your choice so let's see okay so my key board is messed up there's a dollar okay so the hash key is in the pound sign so that that is the hash key that will be the placeholder for my phone number so i'm going to um close this and you can always try it out here yeah so you can see the hashes there so mine is zero zero two three three um two four zero uh triple six seven one two so this is it so it's looking okay 
So I'll just hit next and I'll hit finish. And I'm done. So there is now an input max on my what's um, phone number. Yeah. So I think um, that is just about the phone number. And let's move to the address. Okay. Alright, so for the address, um, you can use what um, text because perhaps your address wouldn't be more than 255 characters. But in a situation, the address is more than 255. You either use long text or you use what uh, memo. Yeah, so let's say um, it is more than 255. So I'll go for memo, but um, yeah, so we'll go for memo here and then the format. So let's see what we have there for the format. So there's nothing there. Then the caption will provide what um, address. So that is the caption. And yeah, that is fine. So um, let's yeah, either save it or even if you are going to back to the data sheet view, um, they are going to ask you to save it anyway. So let's get back to the data sheet view so that we'll look at it from that view as well. Okay, so this time you can see we have what uh, more than two views. When we started, we were having only two views. We just had what the data sheet and then the design view. But now we have what pivot table view and then pivot chart view. It means you can still even use this to create pivot tables and then um, pivot charts and then you can view them on your forms. So this is really a powerful tool. Yeah, that um, if you learn to use, you'll find so many useful applications for it, for your business, your office, and so on. So um, let's go back to the data sheet view, and this is it. And we can enter data from this part. So I can say um, this is data student ID. Okay, and then the first name. Um, let's put the first name here last name and the, the date of birth so let's see what our rule is working so um, we said you can put a date in the future so let me put um, 17th today is 16th so and then let's try to move to the next one okay so it means our rule was wrong we have to go back and change the sign okay yeah sometimes i get my greater than and less than signs mixed up so we'll have to go and fix that. Then the gender will select what um, male. And then the program, um, let's say, um, yeah, the program maybe MBA something. Yeah, MBA. Um, let's say accountant. The level um, perhaps six hundred. And the phone number so. We'll have to provide the phone numbers here. So if, and then the address, I'll just say maybe um, uh, UPSA Street or something. Or perhaps UPSA Campus or something. So this will just be our address. All right, so let's enter a second record so we can have this ID then 35. Yeah, so let's say Emmanuel, perhaps um, Arma. Okay, so I need to go and resolve the date of birth. Yeah, because um, the date is in the future. It allows future dates. So let's see if you try to put um, a date, an actual date of birth, something that is correct. So you see there is an error there. Yeah, so it's the reverse. So we have to go and correct this. So let's go and correct that. Then we'll come and enter some what um, couple of data and we can what uh, move to other tables. Okay, so um, once this is done, I will just hit save and then um, let me close this. 
then we can go towards um, the table um, uh, home tab make sure you're in the home tab and then yeah. open the table yeah and then um, you can go to the design view so click on the arrow to give us a drop down then we get back to the design view so um we have to correct the rule for the date of birth so this is the rule it should be what greater than yeah so what i did was greater than so it should be what um less than yeah so it means the date now should be what um, okay let me interpret it well so what this means is that whatever date you are providing should be less than now okay so it means the less than should face the other way and then the um the wider part of the symbol should face now that is the interpretation okay so let's um save this and then we can go back okay so let's see let's get back to the data sheet view all right, so they, they are going to ask you to save. You will hit yes. Okay. All right, so let's go. And we can now provide our date of birth, which is um, if you try to put the one in the future, you are going to have the error. So we should put um, an accurate date of birth. So let me change it to 1980. okay so then emmanuel armor the date of birth um let me use yeah 1967 um, all right so then the agenda is still male then the um, program let's see um yeah bsc perhaps um, sc um it management so itm Okay, so BSC ITM and then um, the level is 400 and then um, we'll provide the phone numbers here. Okay, then the address, yeah, so you see the address if mostly is upsa campus so you can set that to default okay yeah so that is one thing you can always do um if there is a particular value that is going to be common to most of them except some few situation you can set a default um yeah value for that particular field so um after this i'll set the address to be default upsa so let's um Put the address there. Um, okay. Now um, let's get back to the design view so that we can set the um, address as default UPS. So let's get to the design and then um, address. So we'll go to um, the properties. There is a place for default value, so it's right here. So default value, you should put it in quotes, okay? So whatever um, you are providing as your default should be in double quotes. So you use double quotes, and then we'll see what um, UPS is. So that is a value. Okay, so that is also done, and then we can what? Get back to the data sheet view. So to go there, they will ask us to save it. You hit yes, and now you can see our default is always UPSC. 
there. But um, if you have a student that is not um, resident on UPSA campus, then you can see what um, you can change the default when there is a need. Yeah. Okay, so let's add another student. Um, that will be. So, um, okay, and then we'll provide the date of birth. So this is supposed to be a female, and then um, we have what um, MBA, yeah, MBA. Um, let's see, petroleum accountant. So we have what pet accountant. What uh, level 600, and then we'll provide the phone number here. Okay, so yeah, that is fine, and then yeah, so you can be adding records here, but normally. Um, what happened is that um, this view of what your database is only for database administrators. Yeah, so your database users wouldn't be allowed to what, have access to um, the back end. So this is what we call the back end of what your database. They wouldn't be ha allowed to have what this access. So they will only interact with this table through um, forms yeah, or um, user interfaces. Okay, so um, let's, we are done with this table. Um, what we'll do now is what, to go and create our second table. But let's see, um, it's getting too long. Okay, um, 37 minutes. I think uh, we can pause here and then um, come back to what, um, create another table in what, uh, another video. Okay. So see you in the next video.